well get to talking. Um, sorry about the video today, but so today is the day after. Um, the beginning of this video was my drive actually. I probably look the same, but um, the beginning of this video was my drive to my appointment. Um, and now we are the day later because it took me all night last night to uh, gather my thoughts and really decide what I was going to say and how I was going to explain what happened yesterday. So I went to my appointment. They brought me in pretty pretty on time. They were pretty good about that usually. Um, and the nurse came in. She asked me what was going on. She was like, I see that you had an exam earlier in the year. So what's going on? And I told her, I said, you know, my husband and I have been trying now for a year and I'm here to kind of find out what's going on. I don't really know what um, the next steps are as far as like what the plan is for today. I don't really, I don't really know um, anything that you guys need to do, but I'm prepared for whatever you need to do, um, blood work or ultrasound or exam or conversation, whatever it is. Um, so she was like, so she took a, like a pretty quick history and then she was like, all right, let me go ask the doctor what she wants to do because you were here, um, you know, a little less than a year ago. So she went out, she was out for a while, she came back in and she said that she just wants her to do a blood pressure and then send me into her office. So I was like, okay. So immediately I was like, this is really what I came here for. <laughs> like, sorry, I'm going to try to lower this. So, that didn't really help. Anyway, so she did my blood pressure, which was 116 over 70, which was fantastic. I mean, my blood pressure is pretty good, um, all things considered. I used to have high blood pressure, so um, it was 160 over 100 for um, quite a while. And so I'm actually pretty happy with where we're at as far as blood pressure goes. Um, and then she sent me into her office, and I sat there for probably five or six minutes, kind of going through my list of questions, make sure I asked these things. I was like, I came here for a reason. I'm going to get my answers. Well, so we sat down. She asked me what was going on. She asked me if I had tried taking using the urine um, ovulation predictor tests. I told her that I was. I explained to her that I didn't understand why um, I had never gotten a real positive. And she was like, oh, sometimes that happens. Sometimes they don't work for people. And I was like, okay. I mean, I'm going to listen to the doctor, right? So I understand that I spend a lot of time during my two-week wait um, doing my own little research and reading up on what other people's experiences are because sometimes experience really does help. Um, sometimes it's not helpful at all and actually makes people go crazy. But um, I'm going to listen to the doctor on this one. So she said it doesn't always work for everybody. That doesn't mean that I'm not ovulating. She said that she's going to take a good a good healthy guess and I understand what that means but she said she's gonna guess that I am ovulating because my periods have been regular so I told her that they've been pretty much on point 29 to 33 days which I believe I've told you guys before um, and that this last month was only 25 days which was strange but um, you know whatever <coughs> um, that I had seen you know, line progression on them, but it never actually went to positive. I did tell her that I used a fertility monitor last month, um, and it never showed uh, a peak. So she said sometimes it doesn't, you know, urine tests don't show for everyone. Okay. So then she started talking about the things that we have to do. She told me that she wants to do a full fertility workup, um, and we're going to start with a blood work, an ultrasound, an HSG, which I don't, I'm, I'm not going to grab the paper right now, but you can Google it and, or I'll add um, either up here or down here, I'm not really sure, um, but I'll add what that HSG stands for. It's like histo, stereo, I don't know, whatever, I'm not going to even, something O-gram. It's basically, they inject um, a dye into your uterus through your cervix, which means they go through your vagina into your cervix or through your cervix to inject dye into your uterus. Um, and then as they're doing that, it's like for my medical people out there, it's like a barium study essentially. So um, they inject dye, they take an x-ray and then they check and see if the um, dye was taken up by both 
the uterus, so it shows you the uterine lining um, better than an ultrasound would. And then, <clears throat> or like, you know, more specifically, I guess, because it'll show you the outline. And then it shows you if the tubes, which are these thin, tiny little tubes, um, the fallopian tubes are clear or not. So if the dye doesn't uptake into the tubes, um, then you have a blockage somewhere. So then I was like, I kind of gave her that inquisitive, like, well, how would I have a blockage if everything's always been normal? And she said, have you ever had chlamydia? And I was like, not to my knowledge. And I understand that's like one of the most treatable and the most common sexually transmitted diseases. And she asked me because I had commented that I have never, you know, officially that I know of been pregnant other than one positive test one time because I, it was not repeatable, which might have been, you know, a chemical pregnancy or it could have just been the test. Um, <clears throat> so an evap line or whatever, maybe I was just assuming that that was a positive. Um, so anyway, so she said, I said, I mentioned to her that you know, before my husband, we've been together almost 10 years, but before my husband, I, um, you know, I had some years where I wasn't exactly just with, I wasn't with one person. So, um, I don't, I, I mean, I'm not trying to put my, like, history out there and say that I was a bad person. I wasn't. I just was going through some issues and I, whatever, you guys get the point. Anyway, I'm like dancing around the point. Um... Because even though, you know what, even though this is supposed to be, and I want this to be as open and honest as possible, I, I don't want to, I don't want my husband to feel like I'm putting out more information than I need to. I want this to be more informative so that people know the process that we've gone through and, and for support for myself, but also for other people, you know, like you don't need to know the whole background to to be supportive and to kind of get out of this what I hope that people can get out of it. All right, so anyway, um, you get the point. So she had mentioned chlamydia, asked me if I had ever tested positive. Um, I told her, to my knowledge, no. Um, but that got me thinking. And so basically she said that if I had ever had chlamydia, whether it was treated or untreated, especially if it was untreated, um, I guess from my own little research um, and her very vague answer, you can have, it is possible to have chlamydia and it go away on its own, um, but it doesn't usually go away on its own without causing some damage, which may or may not be um, irreversible. So, <coughs> excuse me. So basically, um, what can happen is that it can cause PD, I think it's called, so it's um, basically inflammatory disease of the pelvic area. Um, so it can cause inflama in inflammation, which can cause scar tissue, which can scar the tubes, which are again really, really thin and delicate um, tissues that can, ca can get scarring, which can cause a plethora of issues including blockage, as well as things like um, you know, there's a whole process to the egg being released and then the fallopian tubes bringing the egg down and then it, it you know, traveling along the fallopian tube, you like my little, traveling along the fallopian tube before it gets down to the uterus. And if there's anything mechanically wrong with that fallopian tube, it can stop the egg from actually going down. And this is why ectopic pregnancies happen. And I'm not saying that everyone who's had ectopic pregnancies have had chlamydia. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that this is what I've been told by my doctor as well as what I've read um, in a medical journal last night when I went home because I was thinking a thousand miles a minute. So basically, i um, running out of time so I want to make this quick, but basically um, it can cause, if there's like something wrong with the fallopian tube, the sperm can still get to it, the egg can still get down partially, but then if they... Um, if you know conception occurs if the fallopian tube has damage to it it might not bring the egg all the way down the way that it's supposed to so that's why and whatever the damage is in the fallopian tube depends on the person and when the reason for it depends on the person but my doctor specifically asked me because of my brief history that we discussed um, if I had ever had chlamydia because this can cause these issues so I told her not to my knowledge but I will tell you that my first visit to an OB was when I was 18. So what happened from 12 to 18, I do
do not know. And I say 12 because, and, and people are like, oh my God, 12. Um, I was, a little bit of history was sexually assaulted at 12 years old, which turned into this like downward spiral and you got to kind of get the idea. So, um, I met my husband when I was uh, 19, 20-ish and <clears throat> I guess 20. Um, and I've been pretty much with him, not pretty much, I've been with him ever since. So, anyway, that was a long, very quickly drawn out explanation. So, basically, um, that's where we're at. So she gave me this big, huge bite to chew on about, um, you know, possibly having ever had chlamydia and possibly my tubes could be blocked. So she really wants me to get this HSG test, which can't be done until about a week or so after my period is over. So it has to be after my period before I ovulate. So unfortunately, I'm right around the window of ovulation. So she said we wouldn't want to do it right now. Um, she did set me up for an ultrasound, which I had yesterday. I don't know anything about it yet. Once I do, I will let you know. The ultrasound tech said she wouldn't be worried, um, but that's all she said. She does know that there were fibroids there. Um, fibroids, two small fibroids noted in January. So um, I'm hopeful that maybe they're gone or gotten, gotten smaller or I'm not sure. But um, as us medical professionals know, depending on who does the ultrasound, you may find different things. Um, so, and then the blood work, it has to be on day two or three of my cycle. So that's where we're at. My husband, she told me to have him do the semen analysis, which he is doing. Um, and that's it. So I will update you guys as soon as I know. Uh, again, sorry for the view of this video. Um, I forgot my stand and sorry for talking super, super fast. This time I talked super fast. Last time I talked really slow. All right. Well, uh, 